Hey there, um, carrying on with uh, making a bespoke guild from start to finish, directly from our last video. Um, as you can see, I've followed through and I've basted the, well, I've attached the front apron canvas. And the, again, the reason why I've left this notch here is that remember our um, lining is gonna be sewn in there. We'll see that in a bit. So, so that's sewn down just shy of the edge of the first um, pleat as shown by this yellow line. And now I am doing the lacing. And I think I've shown this in a previous video, but this is just a better uh, better um, view and a better you know, lesson. Now I'm sewing quite wide because I'm going, not only am I sewing these two pieces of tartan together, I'm also passing the needle through these bits of canvas. So it's a rather large, sort of ungainly seam. And I got my finger underneath to make sure that the needle isn't passing or gonna pass through the cloth because if it runs into my finger, I'll know. So I can just, I can feel it going through the, the canvas as I do this. So I'm doing a, a number of passes. As I said, mentioned earlier, we want a bit of wiggle room for that strap so we don't get erosion. And I have to admit, I'm showing off a little bit by using a different colored thread. Well, frankly, I wanted to see if I could sew this with a different color thread. And you can see how I'm doing a, a pad stitch where I'm passing, I'm making, see, I'm, you can hardly even see the the, uh, the thread on the outside of the stitch. And this this stitch is used in several, uh, part, uh, several aspects of tailoring. I'm, I'm using it here so that um, now this is, I'm being a little bit cautious because you can see a bit of a dot there, but that's also about where the edge of the, um, the buttonhole of the lining is going to be. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be invisible. If it's not, well, I'm just going to have to go back and do it again, aren't I? Almost there. There we are. And one and two and so to do an overhand knot there and we're just let's just carry on we'll just do this in real time because it's only going to take a bit longer now the next thing after this actually no i'll shut up i'll do this in real time and then i'll talk about what's going to happen next it's a good job i still have some uh nerves in my fingers because I can run a, um, a needle full tilt into my any of my needle uh, fingertips and not get blood because they're so calloused from a lifetime of doing this. Okay, I'm just about to finish that. So I'll just knot it. One, two, three, four. Ran it along, so almost there. I tell you, I'm gonna be some annoyed if I turn over, turn this over, and that there's red thread visible in spite of my care. That just means I get to cut it apart and do it again, two, three. Because even if you've been at it for a while, practice is still essential. Okay, good. I'll snip that off in a minute. I'm just gonna put my needle away. Take a look on the other side. Huzzah. Okay. I only, I only went through once right up at the top there and that's going to be covered by the top band. So I'm not going to get too uh, anxious about that. Now, as I said, you know, several videos ago that, okay, first off, I'm just going to, okay. I just put the strap through. I haven't accidentally sewn the thing shut. That's happened before. Um, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm getting more particular about my workmanship and I'm, from now on, I'm, I'm only going to be accepting distance work, mail order work on on a case by case basis, because otherwise I really don't think you're getting your money's worth unless you're coming in and getting the full experience. So to that end, this fellow lives in town. He's only a few miles from here. I'm going to invite. Actually, I have invited him. Today's Tuesday. He's coming Thursday. So what I'm going to do is to do a test fitting. I have this spare buckle and tab and the spare strap. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this. Now the light's probably shining off that a bit. I'm going to sew this in place temporarily with basting thread, just white thread. And this is an important thing that I keep seeing other kilt makers get wrong. They have this, they'll have the buckle too close. There's the buttonhole. They'll have the buckle hole, the, the buckle too close to the buttonhole, and sometimes over it. And if the if the front bar of the buckle is even parallel with that, you're simply not going to get it tight enough, or at least you can get it tight enough, but possibly, but you're also going to get it, get the, the cloth is going to get pushed out of the way like that. So I move it back. I place it back. What's that? Half an inch, five eighths. So I'm going to sew that in place before he gets here. I'm going to have the strap in place in about the middle of the strap. So it'll be sewed in place like that. And so when he comes on Thursday, <coughs> I'm going to put this thing on him, measure where the strap lands on the inside apron, chalk it, sew that temporarily in place, and then see how it all fits, how it hangs. We're not even looking at the front apron yet. I'm going to see how the rest of it hangs. I'm going to see if how I've basted that down is, is the right angle for the musculature of his thighs. I may have to change that, right? Uh, the one, the one last thing I'm going to do before he gets here is I'm going to base this down with white thread so this is all held together. And then, yeah, so with luck, I'll be able to film with, I haven't asked this permission yet, but with luck, I'll be able to film the, um, the forward fitting, this, or this trial fitting with this gentleman, and I can explain it further. So thank you very much and carry on.